It is uh, 12 degrees outside Fahrenheit, uh, and that is, what is that? Uh, 10, 12, that is negative 10 degrees Celsius, give or take. Uh, that's outside of the building. Now inside the building, I'm gonna show you the thermometer. There we go. Oop. There it is. There we go, a little autofocus. We're at negative five degrees uh, Celsius. So uh, the building is doing some insulation. Now I'm gonna go inside of the grow lane here. There you go, kinda see it. And inside we go. Now when you step in, you can feel and smell the humidity uh, in the air. So it is uh, still humid in here, uh, but much less so than what it was. And a major reason for that humidity, remember, humidity and temperature are definitely related to each other, uh, is because we're at, we're right at freezing. Now, I'm having a problem with the stove keeping going all day long. Uh, I think I'm just getting too much creosote, and that's building up and it's blocking the draft. That's the current thinking anyway. I see creosote leaking out. <sighs> Time is against me though, everybody. I know there's gonna be lots of recommendations. It's just how in the world do I solve the problem in a timely manner? Uh, that's gonna be rough. So, is there a good use for creosote water? I've been wondering that because I'm getting probably about five gallons of creosote water every two days. I'm just capturing it all in a uh, creosote bucket. Uh, so inside the grow lane, I do have fans going. And that fan is taking warm air that's coming up right there from the heating system. And it's blowing it all the way down the lane here. Let's give you a big view. Wanted to show you we are moving the microgreens over to this lane as I talked about in a previous video. Eventually there's gonna be five layers, one, two, three, four, five, worth of shelving here. So this thing's gonna be pretty big. Here's what uh, microgreens look like. These are peas that are just started. We're trying to grow them without any matting. Uh, they do make biodegradable matting that helps save money when you're trying to grow seeds. Um, without having to use dirt and all that uh, and without having to use gravel but uh, I'm not really a fan of it I don't know maybe you guys have some experience uh, I don't want to do paper towels that's a lot of stuff you have to buy some of those paper towels can be very expensive so I need something that bulk if I'm going to put something down and then put the seeds on top of them um, I'll do more videos on micro seeds in the future so if that doesn't make some sense to some of you guys don't worry I'll come back to it I'll explain it some more. I'm gonna show you some more micro greens here. This is radish. Again, this is an experiment where we're just seeing, we're just playing around to see how the microgreens grow without having any bedding or any matting uh, <clears throat> to grow on. Now, here's another experiment. This is our primary way of doing microgreens. We don't have any dirt. We use the hydrostone clay and you can actually see uh, little dots and all that all around. That's the seed. There's seed growing right there. Now some of this has little white stuff on top of it here. There we go. It looks like mold, right? For all of you just getting into microgreens, that's not mold. Those are seed hairs. They're actually sprouting. It's kind of like a root system on a root system. It ho helps hold everything in place. When I first saw it, I was freaked out. I thought, oh my goodness, we have mold everywhere. We're gonna lose everything. But in reality, uh, it's not, it's just natural. So uh, you just normally don't see it because it's underground. Uh, so anyway, if you have that problem, the little uh, root hairs, uh, don't freak out like I did. And I wanna show you that even when it is really cold in here, check that out. Boom. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Those have been growing for a while. They're over uh, mature. They're not microgreens anymore. They're actually just turned into normal old pea shoots. Those are peas. Um, 
we're just kind of letting them go. Uh, we're going to eventually make a salad out of them. They're, I'm not a big fan of peas, but I'll tell you what, the microgreens actually taste pretty good. They taste just like peas. Um, oh, somebody had a question, what are microgreens? Well, as you can see here, those are all just pea seeds. And microgreens are simply uh, the first shoot and leaf. So instead of having one of these where you have multiple leaves on it, see how there's multiple leaves on each one of the, let me pick one here. See how there's a, a double stem there and there's multiple leaves? That's not a microgreen. Still tastes just like a pea though. I mean, it's amazing how good they taste. Though it, uh, they do taste good. But anyway, back to the point. You, you sprout them and you let them sprout up to a stem and then they get their first leaf on them and that's what they call microgreen. It's essentially the exact same seed. It's not essentially, it is the exact same seed that you'd use to grow peas or radish or any other microgreen. So you can basically do microgreens with almost anything. Uh, we're not microgreen experts. I'm not claiming to be a microgreen expert. We're experimenting, we're learning, and I'm just sharing it with you so I kind of see how we're doing it. Um, let's talk about Mars real fast. On Mars, same problem we have here in, in this building. How do you produce seed? With microgreens and here on Earth, we can call a company, we can go online to a company, uh, which is what we do. We tell them how many pounds of seed, what type, and they mail it to us. Now behind all of that is this huge logistical chain where they are having fields upon fields of growers, growing plants, letting them sprout, uh, harvesting the seeds. That's a giant operation. So there are hundreds of seeds in here. Now each one of those will produce microgreens and those microgreens are worth up to $24 per pound and that's why we're doing it. We're trying to finance this operation through our microgreen sales so we can continue to expand and, and figure out this technology and help bring sustainable food and energy to our local community. But if you're on Mars, how are you going to get all that seed? It'd be really expensive to send all that seed up there constantly. Well, maybe that's what we have to do for the first few uh, people that go up there is we'd be constantly be sending them resupply ships uh, but, and bringing them seed. But are they thinking about that? Are they, are they going through and saying, hey, we've got to send up a whole bunch of seed? Well, that's hundreds and hundreds of pounds of seed. And if anything happens to that seed, they're totally out of food. Uh, and we have that same problem here. If we can't get a shipment of seed, we can't make our crops. We're solely dependent on an outside source for that seed. Now, if we were doing heirloom crops, which we're going to be doing for our own uh, purposes, you know, they take a lot longer to grow, they're not as uh, economically viable, they're not going to help finance this project, but we could let them, some of it, go to seed, right? I mean, that's what the old timers would say, is you, you harvest this and you let that go to seed so that you have your seed corn for next year. Uh, and remember, never eat your seed corn for exactly this reason, you got to have more seed to plant. So, We've got to figure out a way to get more sustainable seed. And I think what that takes, I honestly believe what it takes is partnership. All of us working together. If one, let's say a local community, for example. If, if one community put all of this in and they were growing the microgreens or they're growing the vegetables and another part of the community, another partner in the community put another building in and they were responsible for seed. And then maybe, maybe there's a ratio of two seed growers for every one producer. Then together they could actually make it all work. Uh, but if, if they're doing it by themselves, you can't. I, I just don't think it's going to be possible. Maybe for a family of four, which is what we're designing our system to ultimately be, but if you're looking at for large communities or something sustained on another planet, that's going to be pretty tough. So anyway, just some thoughts. Uh, we have a long way to go. You know what? And I, I just wanted to say this too. Uh, we're not the world's foremost expert on any of this. I'm just bullheaded and persistent, and we're gonna figure this out. I'm gonna learn a lot along the way, and I enjoy learning, so uh, I hope you enjoy watching us as we learn. Uh, and maybe there's some of you out there that are experts, and you'd like to help us, um, give us a call. You know, shoot, shoot me an email at trm at Um And let's see what we can do together.